so here this is a use and today we will master the belt conveyor motor and gearbox selection calculation in this video we will not only discuss the formulas but we will try to understand the basis of formula in very much detail which will be definitely help you in selection of motor for other applications also additionally we will also cover the vfd drive for the motors so first of all what are the parameters we need to calculate to make the selection of motor and gearbox for a belt conveyor number one required speed of the motor number two required torque of the motor and number third required power of the motor and there is a thing we have to calculate only two parameters from these and when we will have the two parameters we can easily calculate the remaining one parameter because we know the power is equal to torque multiplied by the speed means if we will have the torque and the speed we can calculate the power or if if we will have the power and speed we can calculate the torque i hope this is pretty much clear so how to calculate any of these two parameters so in case of belt conveyor we can think and make the calculation from two perspective first perspective is the conveyor is a machine which is doing a work transferring the material from one end to another end of the conveyor at a particular speed so we can calculate the power consumption of the conveyor in order to transfer the material from one end to another end at a particular speed because we know the power is rate of doing work and the power consumption will be equal to the power generated by the motor make sense and this perspective is regardless of roller diameter roller diameter of the conveyor we can calculate the power only on the basis of load and the linear speed but in this method there is a problem there is a limitation and this method will not help you in all the situations that we will figure out while the calculation so we need the second perspective is to directly calculate the motor capacity that how much torque is required to move the belt additionally how much torque is required to accelerate the movement of inertia of the complete conveyor system and when we will have the total calculated torque we can calculate the power at a desired speed so let's first try to calculate the motor power from first perspective and also try to understand that what are the limitation of this method so we won't make the mistake ever in selection of motor so what are the parameters we need to know to make the selection of motor to make the calculation of motor number 1 total length and width of the belt conveyor so for example let's say the conveyor length is 5 meter and width is 500 mm number 2 load over the conveyor belt means how much weight to be transferred by the conveyor at a time for example let's say we have to transfer maximum 20 pieces of the box at a time and each box mass is 20 kg so the total mass on conveyor will be become 400 kg at a time also we have to consider the total mass of the belt itself so number 3 we have to calculate the total mass of the belt and we can calculate the mass of belt as per selected belt material density for a given belt size and for mass density we can refer this table i will leave this table in description and in this table we can see the belt is not made of single material in conveyor belt you will usually find layers of different material high strength material to give the strength against tension belt tension and soft material to reduce the friction and improve the grip so for example let's select one composite of pvc and polyester canvas a belt thickness 2 mm 2.1 mm and here the mass density is defined in unit mass in kg per meter square 2.3 kg per meter square so in order to calculate the total mass of the belt we have to multiply the total area of the belt and the mass density and in our case area will be approximate considering the both side of belt 2 into length of the belt into width of the belt and before doing any calculation first convert all the units in one in si unit if you are not from us length in meter time in second and mass in kg and force in newton so the width of the belt will be become 0.5 meter and put this value 
so mass of the belt become 11.5 kg so the total mass that we have to transfer the mass of the load is 400 kg plus mass of the belt 11.5 kg equal to 411.5 kg and number 4 we need the coefficient of friction between belt and the belt support and here coefficient of friction for the belt backside is 0.2 and number fifth we need the desired speed of the conveyor and in case of conveyor we mostly get the desired speed in meter per minute or we can get in cycle time means how much time will take to transfer the material from conveyor one side to the other side to the another side for example let's say our desired speed of conveyor is 20 meter per minute so let's convert it into si unit meter per second so just divide this value by the 60 so the speed of conveyor will be become 0.33 meter per second and what if if the speed is given in cycle time for example cycle time is 15 second then convert it into meter per second how because it's given material to be transferred in 15 second from one end to another end and length of conveyor is 5 meter so the belt means material over the belt will get transfer per second 5 divided by 15 0.33 meter so again the speed of conveyor is 0.33 meter per second and now i want your closer attention so calculate the power we know that the power is the rate of doing work so power equal to work divided by time also we know the work done is equal to force multiplied by the displacement and if we will rearrange the formula displacement divided by the time equal to velocity so the power is equal to force multiplied by the velocity and now in case of belt conveyor the force required to pull the belt is equal to frictional force between belt and the belt support which we can calculate the using the formula of frictional force the frictional force to be exact static frictional force is equal to coefficient of friction multiplied by normal force and normal force is total mass into gravity of acceleration and now put the values so the pull force is equal to 1614.7 newton and the speed is 0.33 meter per second and put the values of force in equation of power so the power will become 538.2 newton meter per second and we know the one newton meter per second is equal to one watt so the power is 538.2 watt or we can say 0.538 kilowatt and we can convert it into hp and one hp is equal to 476 watt means 0.72 hp Top of that we can also consider some factor of safety to balance out the efficiency of motor. So let's say safety of factor is 1.5 times. So the required power of motor will be 1 HP. And as you have seen that we have not considered the roller diameter of conveyor in power calculation at all. And now we have to calculate the speed of motor, rotational speed of motor in RPM because we cannot make the selection of motor on the basis of HP only because motors comes with different combination of speed and torque for the same HP. So let's first calculate the required speed of the motor and as we have the belt linear speed in meter per minute we can convert it into rotary speed means motor speed but for that we need the roller diameter of the conveyor and for example let's say roller diameter driving roller diameter is 45 mm and here i want your closer attention that how to convert the linear speed into rotary speed so as given the linear speed of 20 meter per minute and the roller diameter is 45 mm so first calculate the circumference of the roller and as we know the circumference of roller is equal to pi into d or we can say 2 pi r and this will become 141.3 mm so convert it into meter 0.1413 meter means when this roller will rotate once it will transfer the belt by the length of circumference means 0.1413 meter equals to one revolution so the one meter is equal to 1 divided by 0.1413 meter and the 20 meter is equal to 20 divided by 0.1413 means 
141.5 revolution means the rotational speed of motor is 141.5 revolution per minute rpm and if you want to calculate the torque here you can calculate it so as we know the power of motor equal to torque multiplied by the speed means torque equal to power divided by angular speed and we can convert the rpm into angular speed radian per second by multiplying 2 pi divided by 60 so the angular speed will be become 14.8 radian per second and put the values so the torque will become 36.33 newton meter and now we have the required motor power 1 hp speed 141.5 rpm and the required torque is 36.3 newton meter but there is a big problem in this method and the problem is what if what if we remove the belt support if we will remove the belt support because because sometimes we design the belt conveyor for the short distance without supports then there will be no friction there will be no frictional force no pulling force is required and when the pulling force will be zero the torque power will be zero means we do not need any torque to move the belt but we know this is not true and this equation you will be find on internet everywhere but this is the limitation of this equation because we always need a torque to rotate the conveyor even if we will need a starting torque to rotate the conveyor roller only because of moment of inertia and we cannot easily add the moment of inertia factor in this equation because moment of inertia is related to rotation moment of inertia is related to the torque not to the force and in case of heavy conveyor heavy loaded conveyor or heavy rollers moment of inertia will be very high but you might be say that we can consider some safety factor to manage the moment of inertia but actually considering a roughly safety factor without calculation can harm your system let's see how so this is a graph torque versus a speed of the motor the torque is defined on y-axis and a speed is on x-axis and let's say the cl the green line is the load torque actual needed torque for the conveyor and the cm the blue one is the our selected motor torque and definitely we need a gap between these two torque and this gap is our motor starting torque and we can say motor starting torque equal to selected motor torque minus conveyor loaded torque and somehow we can relate this starting torque with movement of inertia with some simplification so the motor starting torque will be equal to moment of inertia multiplied by the starting acceleration ca and now i want your closer attention if the selected motor torque will be very near to the loaded torque the motor starting acceleration will be low means motor will take long to reach the final speed and this long time can be caused to risk of rising temperature of the motor and if the selected motor torque will be much more higher than that loaded torque motor starting torque and acceleration will be high and this higher starting torque and acceleration will give a jerk on the joints like bearing coupling of the conveyor or any other application any other system so we have to have calculate the moment of inertia and the starting torque so let's try the second perspective of calculation we will directly calculate the required torque of the motor that how much torque is required to move the belt and the total required torque will be belt pulling torque plus moment of inertia torque plus there will be one more factor belt rolling resistance which we cannot calculate explicitly so we will consider some safety factor so first let's try to calculate the belt pulling torque or we can say load torque so torque equal to pulling force multiplied by rotational radius and in case of belt conveyor rotational radius is the driving roller radius so the torque will become 36.3 newton meter and this is interesting the torque value calculated from both perspective is the exactly same because it has to be same and now let's try to calculate the moment of inertia but if you are completely beginner and you don't know much more about moment of inertia please let me know in comment i will make a separate video on it 
because moment of inertia is itself a big topic. Here we will only use the formula. So first let's try to calculate the moment of inertia for roller around the rotational axis. And as roller is cylindrical shape, the moment of inertia will be 1 by 4 m r square. Here m is the mass and let's say the mass of roller is 15 kg. r is the radius of 0.0225 meter and the numbers of roller is 2. So multiply it with by 2. If there were any other supporting roller then we would have to consider them as well. So the moment of inertia will be 0.0018 kg meter square. And now let's try to calculate the moment of inertia of the load over the conveyor belt. And with some simplification we can calculate the moment of inertia with this formula inertia of object in linear motion and here in this equation m is the mass and a is the unit of moment and here the unit of moment is the roller circumference so put the values and the value will be 0.208 kg meter square and also we have to consider the moment of inertia of motor and the gearbox before final selection and for that we have to check the motor and gearbox catalog the motor moment of inertia for 1 hp 0.0028 kg meter square for gearbox ratio 1 is to 10 the gearbox moment of inertia is 0.00063 kg meter square and after sum up all these moment of inertia because moment of inertia is an extensive property additive property so the moment of inertia will be 0.231 kg meter square but we have to calculate the torque and we know the torque is equal to moment of inertia multiplied by angular acceleration. So what about the acceleration? And this is the critical part that how we can decide the acceleration for a particular motor because the acceleration time is also depend on the load over the conveyor and calculating the right acceleration is a long process of simulation and mostly OEM can do it better. But with some simplification, here is the sum data, the acceleration time data. For a small motor for light duty application, a range like 4 to 5 HP, the acceleration time should be few seconds, like fraction of seconds to 2 seconds. And for the medium motor size, 5 HP to 100 HP, the acceleration time should be within 10 to 15 seconds. And for the huge size motor, large size motor, like more than 100 HP, the acceleration time can be up to several minutes. So as our motor power is around 1 HP, let's consider the acceleration time 2 seconds. So the acceleration will become final velocity minus initial velocity divided by time taken 2 seconds. And here for final velocity in general for a belt conveyor we use asynchronous motor induction motor a three page induction motor and an induction motor comes with only some a specific speed like 3000 rpm 1500 rpm 1000 rpm or 750 rpm why because the speed of induction motor is equal to 120 multiplied by frequency divided by number of magnetic pole and the number of pole will be always in pairs so if the motor is two pole the speed will be 3000 rpm and if the number of pole will be four the speed will be 1500 rpm and so on but this is not exact speed this is synchronous speed actual speed will be less than the synchronous speed because of the slip as we will go for the less number of pole, the speed will be increased and at the same time the torque will be decreased. And as we will go for the less number of pole, the speed will be decreased and the torque will be increased. Because the more number of poles will draw more current. And we consider two pole motor as a high speed motor. So generally four pole motor is considered as a medium speed motor and 6 pole as a low speed motor and the 8 pole is a ultra low or ultra high torque motor. I know these things sounds electrical but as a mechanical design engineer we have to know these things. And generally we choose 4 pole motors for most of applications because this motor is good balance between torque and the speed and the noise. 
plus this 4 pole motor is easily available. So let's select a motor with 4 pole 1500 rpm and the speed will be around 1450 or 1430 rpm. It's also depend on motor efficiency rating like IE3, IE2 or IE1. But this is the motor speed. So we will never reach the final speed because of the load. So let's consider the final speed 1400 rpm and first change it into radian per second so the acceleration will be 73.2 radian per second square and put the value of acceleration so the starting torque will be 15.65 newton meter so the total torque will be become 51.9 newton meter approximately 52 newton meter and the required speed of the conveyor is already calculated 141.5 rpm or in radian 14.8 radian per second so the power will be become 769.6 watt means 1.03 hp and now we have to select a motor according to these data so to get the desired speed of the conveyor which is only 141.5 rpm we need to reduce the speed of the motor to get the desired speed using the gear box and in conveyor we generally use warm gear or helical warm gear and we can simply calculate the motor gear ratio by dividing the desired speed of conveyor by selected motor speed and the ratio will be 1 is to 10.1 or we can consider the 1 is to 10. So as we use the gearbox, we have decreased the required load on motor by 10 times. Means we need a motor which can deliver the torque 5.2 Newton meter approximately at the speed of 1430 rpm. And here don't be confused, the gearbox is only decreasing the output speed of the motor and increasing the output torque of the motor. But the power will be remain same with gearbox or without gearbox. I hope you get my point. But still if you have any query please ask in comment. And what if if you want a variable speed feature then we have to use the VFT variable frequency drive so what VFT do VFT change the speed of the motor by changing in the frequency and in general VFD comes in range of 0 to 60 Hz so for example if we will drive a motor with VFD at 40 Hz a speed will be become the base speed which is 1430 rpm multiplied by VFD frequency which is 40 hertz and divided by the motor base frequency which is 50 hertz induction motors generally comes with 50 hertz so the speed will be become 1144 rpm but keep in mind that when you will go for the low frequency the speed will be decreased and at the same time the torque will be decreased quadratically 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 i don't know how to pronounce it and this is it for the motor and gearbox selection for a belt conveyor i hope i did my best thank you so much for the watching